Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this battleship is a 1970 Dodge Monaco station wagon. This car belongs to our friend and customer, Willie. And eventually, it'll be shipped to Germany where he lives. But for now, it's still here gracing us with its presence. This thing is a total survivor car. And while it's not immaculate, it's really, really nice. I've actually featured a different green wood-sided wagon on the channel before. This horrible hunk of junk, which somehow looks even worse than last time we saw it. Yep, still seized. The Monaco is one of Dodge's full-size models. Riding on the C-body chassis, like the rest of Chrysler's full-size offerings, it's about the size of a school bus. At least a small one. Just look at all this. It's in such amazing shape. Roof rack? Naturally. Grab handles at the back, as well as steps. In the 1970 Dodge brochure, you're informed that the back window on the Monaco wagon mysteriously washes itself when it retracts into the back door. Mysteriously. Not magically, not using science, mystery. In truth, there are all kinds of incredible features found in this thing. Electric windows, nice. Electric locks, which are actuated by doing this. Ooh, hand crank wing window. You know, like a Impala or whatever. Of course, it's got air conditioning, rear speaker, fancy thumb wheel radio, and a track. It's got a rim blow steering wheel, which doesn't. Cruise control, nice. Admire the funky bi-level dash found in the 70 Monaco. And something else, the super light control. The super light's a pretty rare option. It's this extra light on the driver's side, not matched on the passenger side. You know, it's sort of like a fog light. It appears to be a fancy projector lens, much like modern headlights. Of course, 70 was when the wraparound bumper took off at Dodge, and that's what we have here. Of course, this is a full-size car, so it's humongous. Admire the shiny valence. We installed that. The original was kind of smashed. But everything else on this body is just great. Really, really cool. I did just learn that these two power windows aren't working. Not sure what that's about, but it's probably a future Jamie problem. Like many other rear doors on these station wagons, this one can be either a tailgate, which flips down, or a door, which opens sideways. Way too fancy. Our Coronet wagon doesn't have that feature. And although there's a humongous box in the way so I can't open it, I believe here you will find a rear-facing seat. Favorite seating position of children, like my mother, that grew up in the 60s and 70s. Under the hood of this one, 444 barrel. In fact, it's an engine that should look familiar if you've spent any time at all on this channel. This is the 440 that ate a lifter in another video earlier this year. It's good now. This was the first instance of losing a lifter on break-in that I'd ever experienced. It wasn't fun. Of course, it had to happen on a nice customer engine like this, destined for a beautiful car like this one, and not on some of my junk. We've gone to great lengths to make sure the hardware on this engine is entirely correct. Everything's nice, the way it's supposed to be. Except for, you know, the big shiny thing that says Edelbrock on it. Ooh, factory 1970 only vacuum can. Of course, it's not on the car, for reasons. And neither is this. A correct, numbers matching 1970 444 barrel holly. Tom went to about the ends of the earth to find the correct number core to use. And I have a lot of hours into making this thing nice. Restoring hardware. Coating on the throttle blades. The slightly too shiny gold paint on the bowl there was a bit of an experiment. Obviously it wasn't quite right, but it was a nice idea. Unfortunately, this back bowl, also painted, turned out to have a leak around that plug. So that was a problem. And the brand new but 50 years old power valve that I put in this thing, also bad. Which led to a horrible rich condition when we first started that engine up and really might be the reason the cam lobe went flat in the first place. I've been through this thing several times trying to get it to work right, and we finally all got together and decided to put it on the shelf, where it belongs, and switch to an Edelbrock. Now that is not to say that given enough time I couldn't make this thing work, but cost-benefit analysis. How many more days? <laughs> yeah, we'll just put it in a box, and then he has it. 
And that vacuum pot is also off of the engine. Don't worry about this one being grimy. That's just there for test purposes. We'll get back to that. It'll be shiny when we're done. The problem with that 70 only unit is it requires the correct carburetor to work as there's a ground switch built into the throttle linkage on that. Without it, the timing curve is goofy and basically untunable. So we switched to the standard vacuum pod and all is well. NOS heater control valve. Neat. I restored that breather. No big deal. I restored that fan blade too. And I was very proud to save the part number stamping on it. Of course, you can't see it at all once it's installed, but that's fine. Uh, I think we still need to paint that, but the compressor's done. Admire the hideous paint on the exhaust manifolds. That's because the factory painted them on the engine, so we paint them on the engines. And then it all burns off. We still need to figure out how to hook up the cruise control, among other little things. But we're getting places. There's still some funky things. Don't worry about that. Anyway, how's it run? Pretty good, at least when it's warm. Admire the brand new dual exhaust kit. Installed by my coworker Evan. He did most of the assembly on this car. Yeah, if you don't know anything about the ABS-2, you should. Solid street unit. Just a nice solid carburetor. This thing sounds great now and no horrible ticking noises. What a sweet cruiser this is gonna be. I like it. Willie's plans are to take this thing on a giant road trip across the country, which just sounds amazing. All right, that needs some attention. Hey, do I have to crash? Hey, we need mufflers. Wait a minute. This is a lifetime. <laughs> Why did we buy new mufflers? We're currently marveling over this all of the options okay it might be short one or two but most of them are here and this q in the von means funky things maybe like it may have been a dealer demonstrator it came with a broadcast sheet it's for the wrong car but it's still pretty cool this thing is full of amazing artifacts how cool is this factory original 1970s stuff that means the driver's side lug nuts tighten backwards Oh, come on. Can't do this one-handed. Don't forget to turn your ratchets off at night. The crown jewel. The dual snorkel textured black air cleaner. There you go. The icing on the cake. Dodge Division hubcaps. Well, apparently the fuel gauge is inaccurate. And uh, there's some surface rust in that tank. We're not going to worry about that for now. I was going to go ahead and install the heat shield, but unfortunately the two tiny bolts I restored for that have grown feet. Oh, also, this T-code, non-HP 440, is not supposed to have a dual snorkel air cleaner, but that's what was on it, and we stuck with it. Temporary battery hold down, installed. Don't worry about all this. This is going to get fixed too. It's fine, for now. So far, the farthest this land yacht's been is around the yard. But, I aligned the front end, and I'd really like to know if it's any good. And in case you were wondering, yes, I do have my boater's license, actually. I've driven a good few full sizes at this point, but man, this is a lot of car. Ah, well, we answered the alignment question really fast. I'm always getting steering wheels wrong. Maybe that's because I don't have a steering wheel lock. I need to get one of those. We're still cooking that paint off the exhaust. This is the hardest this engine has had to work yet, so there are some smells involved. It's so cool. Also, why is it so low? Maybe because it weighs like 5,000 pounds or something. If you saw the build video, then you know this engine is not supposed to be a horsepower machine. It's just stock, very, very stock. It's got a tiny Mopar Performance cam now. You know, I mean, it's adequate. I'm also not testing it at all. It's respectable, it makes torques. The burning exhaust smell is horrible. So is this line of traffic. It's just so much car. It's incredible. 
course, nowadays we have big stupid SUVs, but if you want to dress up like it's 1977, load the entire family and head to the Grand Canyon or whatever, may I present to you a 1970 Dodge Monaco wagon. I can think of no more ideal band tour vehicle either. Just start stacking amplifiers and cabinets up on that roof rack. If you can camp on the side of the road between some trees in a B-body coronet wagon, which you can, I tested that theory, you can definitely do it in this with room to move around even. I've somehow only just noticed that this thing is an extra pair of headlights away from a really good family truckster tribute. So much fanciness. Well, anyway, there you go. A quick look at Willie's 1970 Dodge Monaco. It's large, it's in charge, it still needs some work, but man, we are getting there. This thing is gonna be amazing. Look forward to it storming the Autobahn sometime soon. And remember, this is no longer a vacation. It's a quest, a quest for fun. I'm gonna have fun and you're gonna have fun.